and leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. Now, at the time, you were the only analyst in the world to mention that it would starve the banks. Reggie Middleton, who nailed Facebook, by the way. I mean, not to be impolite, but what makes you so special that they all want to read your blog? Um, I can step on toes and be objective, objective and uh, offensively honest. Greetings, this is Reggie Middleton. Uh, this is my third installment on uh, my Bitcoin and digital currency analysis. Basically, what I want to do is bring the truth to potential investors, practitioners, uh, and users of Bitcoin and digital currencies in general. In this short session, what I'm going to do is compare the returns of Bitcoin to the conventional fiat currencies and the risks. You know, a lot of people look at the returns and see gross returns of 100, 200, 300, 400, 1,000, 6,000 percent, 20,000 percent. But of course, you have to factor in the risk and the risk uh, and the risk reward uh, formula, and you also have to define risk. We got to define it from more of an institutional investor perspective, and not just up down volatil up and down volatility. What risk is is basically deviation from expected return. In other words, you expect to get X, but instead you get X minus four. That X minus four portion is the risk. That's a deviation from your expectations. As you can see from the chart where I have Bitcoin's uh, historical performance in US dollars. It's been on a tear. You know, it has gone up steadily and gradually and outperformed most currencies through the majority of its existence. But this past year has been phenomenal. Now, it didn't go straight up, it went up and down, but primarily up. Uh, Bitcoin has a history of roughly from 2009, 2014, of roughly five years. Okay, and those five years of existence, um, public existence, that is, it's went from less than a dollar per Bitcoin, significantly less than a dollar per Bitcoin, to up to $1,200 per Bitcoin. And right now, I think it's hovering around a seven, eight hundred dollar mark, give or take. Very volatile asset. The volatility comes from its new economy, uh, relatively thin trade, and speculation, of course. I mean, add speculation into a thin uh, trade, uh, to a, a thin float, you're going to have. There are volatility. opportunities in Bitcoin for traders, um, there are opportunities in Bitcoin for institutional investors, and there are opportunities in Bitcoin for those who want to do more, do more with the actual transmission system with the platform than most even can conceive of. That we will address in the next video along with a report from my subscribers. I think this will blow the socks off for many uh, viewers of the video and readers of the report. I'll put a summary on my site, Boomba's Blog, for free and I'll of course do a video, but the meat will be behind the paywall. And basically I'll show how we can use the Bitcoin protocol and transmission system to create significant financial transactions, real asset transactions, and even information transactions. Yes, this is the reason why I explain to everybody that Bitcoin is not a bubble because Bitcoin is uh, analogous to the internet. Well, the internet was a world or uh, internet protocol was transformed into a world wide web or assisted to create a world wide web of information. The Bitcoin protocol can assist in creating a world wide web of information transaction with information including wealth because wealth could be broken down into bits ones and zeros now for those of you who have a problem understanding that wealth is not ones and zeros i can understand that but that means you should delete your bank accounts because unless you're holding large amounts of fiat currency gold precious metals food commodities etc when you go to the bank those are ones and zeros you're trying to withdraw okay so you have to wrap your head around the concept and as things change, of course, you have a lot, many of those who uh, resist change, don't understand change, 
all make to, to take a significant loss from the change. And that's where the argument and the discussion gets interesting because then you have the oligarchy and those who are the current gatekeepers of financial transmission, wealth, etc. And the current structure that they currently prosper in is threatened by Bitcoin, which is why you have uh, many nations such as China outlawing the banks from dealing with Bitcoin. And there is a fundamental reason, of course, because of the volatility. But the underlying reason is because your Bitcoin allows you to, Bitcoin and digital currencies actually allow the average, average everyday man to circumvent the banking system, to circumvent the government and transmitting wealth. Okay, and this is not a bad thing. Um, a lot of people comment on Bitcoin saying you can use it for illegal, you know, drugs and weapons, etc. Well, you can do the same thing with dollars and people have been doing the same thing with dollars much longer than they've been doing it with Bitcoin. So that's a straw, uh, straw man argument in my opinion. Okay, so now back to the science behind it. For one, there are arbitrage situations and um, I haven't taken advantage of them, but in glancing at the Bitcoin returns, I see that they exist. For instance, if you go to a site that has um, Bitcoin exchanges or trading in several different currencies, such as Mt. Gox, um, that's MTGOX, I'm sure anybody who follows this particular topic is aware of it, you have uh, returns of Bitcoin in, or you have the prices of Bitcoin quoted in several different currencies. So on December 13th, if you would have bought one Bitcoin, okay, you could have actually purchased, sold it for 661 euro at the end of the day close, you could have taken those 661 euro and bought 910 US dollars with it, right? And in, in lieu of going to buy the US dollars directly, because the US dollar exchange rate was uh, 0.78, if I'm not mistaken, I have it actually in a graphic in the video, okay? So if you went through the Bitcoin route, you could have taken advantage of arbitrage, right? That inefficiency, and you would have had a $10.66 spread, arbitrage spread or gain by going through the Bitcoin route versus buying those US dollars directly through Europe. Okay, these opportunities exist and because of the fact that there are not a lot of um, astute, highly liquid or institutional players in the market, you have arbitrage opportunities. Of course, these opportunities will disappear as you have more players coming to the market. Then you also have the daily returns. You have the daily returns of Bitcoin uh, versus uh, the MSCI, Market Stanley's uh, emerging, emerging Market Currency Index, which is a basket of emergency market, emerging, emerging market currencies. We chose that as an index to uh, create the better and as a reference point for measuring Bitcoin's returns and the other digital currency returns because we felt that was the most appropriate. Basically, we had to shoehorn something because there's nothing that exists for right now. So as far as I know, I think we're the market leader in these, we're the industry leader. Actually, I think I'm the only one doing it. We're going to have a significant amount of uh, analysis behind the paywall, boom, bust, blow for anybody who's interested in returns. the daily returns are significant and you can see where you have the volatility but the daily returns for bitcoin spike significantly okay and you can see we're at five digits you know on the bitcoin on the digital currency where there are single digits on the uh index now that index has negative returns as well as positive returns just as and just as the bitcoin does in the u.s dollars the difference is that Bitcoins are significantly exaggerated. From this point on, then we actually attempt to measure the risk. And we measure the risk using standard inst institutional risk metrics, uh, risk measurement metrics. Uh, the Sharpe ratio, which we'll have um, for all the digital currencies and the five major uh, fiat currencies. And we'll also have the calculation of alpha, which we've come up and there'll be, I'll explain the calculation of, of alpha both on this video and in the report on the site. The report should be ready the first week of January, at least the uh, initial report. There'll be a series of reports. And then what I will do is I will detail. And then what I will do is I will detail um, my plans for the digital currencies. For one, 
institutional investors who uh, may want to get some of the excess returns or tap some of the volatility of Bitcoin will have a problem. A, because of liquidity issues. B, because of uh, you know, a whole variety of possible mandates. So I'm going to create vehicles that allow you to access um, or get exposure to the digital currency market. Okay, we're going doing everything. Swaps, options, futures. This is going to be very exciting. Okay, and we're going to use the programmability of Bitcoin to bring it to both the masses, rare legal, and to institutions. Okay, and I'll actually have a screenshot of one of the applications. These applications will be ubiquitous. These applications will be, be, be persistent. As a matter of fact, they'll be designed for Glass, Google Glass. They'll also be designed for smartphone and PC. So you can actually walk down the street, okay, and you can actually attain exposure to Bitcoin, to Euros, to Yen, to Yuan, um, various currencies in and out. So just to, not just the fiat currencies, but the digital currencies as well, primarily Bitcoin and Litecoin. You can do this with glass as you walk down the street. You can actually trade the same thing with smartphones. And you can actually access it through options, futures, swaps, etc. Anybody who is making a uh, significant cash out in, out of Bitcoin or is looking to uh, significantly get into Bitcoin, you use our swap functionality. Okay? I'm excited about this. And that's just the first step. The second and third steps I'm not going to mention now, but we're going to do significant, significant financial uh, innovation. Okay? And by the time we get to the third step, I think a lot of the naysayers for digital currencies will then see where the potential lies. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to take over the world. It may not even persist. But this way of doing business is very interesting and it's extremely exciting. Quite analogous to the internet in the early to mid-90s, where it was also misunderstood. A lot of people didn't think that a search engine discovered by a bunch of college students would end up being a gatekeeper of information um, and data for the entire world. Well, there you go. You know, if you had an open mind, you could have potentially saw it. 